Welcome back to In Focus Kentucky. On this episode, we're focusing on the laws recently enacted to overhaul the adoption and foster care system where, according to the Department of Community-Based Services, over 8,000 kids are currently in state custody. Join me now to discuss the new law is Dr. Terry Brooks, Executive Director of the Kentucky Youth Advocates. Thanks so much for joining us here on the program. Mario, thanks for spotlighting kids. Absolutely. Now, uh, uh, explain to us why it was important for your organizations, KYA, uh, to uh, want to support this bill. Sure. Well, K KYA's vision uh, we think is simple but profound. We want Kentucky to be the best place in America to be young. Uh, that vision absolutely cannot be achieved without a fundamental reform of the child welfare system. And what uh, Representative Meade and his colleagues did this past session was to initiate a process where that would be achieved, where really every facet of child welfare uh, is fundamentally reformed, and we think that's a, a major step ahead for kids in Kentucky. And what are some of the major highlights of the bill that you think are good uh, for the children of the state of Kentucky? Well, first of all, what House Bill 1 recognized is that child welfare is a very complex, very far-reaching issue. Uh, anybody who thinks it's just about one or two things uh, just doesn't understand the complexity of it. Uh, again, I think what representatives uh, Meade and Jenkins and their colleagues did was they tackled so many aspects. Uh, for instance, uh, there is a real commitment uh, around the belief that every kid needs a family. Uh, we know that that uh, placement can be accomplished in a variety of ways whether that's foster care, kinship care, adoptive processes. Uh, the bill recognizes not one pathway, but multiple pathways to achieve that. Uh, a second aspect that uh, is probably uh, you know, less sexy, uh, less headline grabbing, but uh, I think that a, a major piece of the bill that will affect families is that House Bill 1 really looked at some internal operations of the cabinet itself. Uh, so when you think about changing the uh, functions of the ombudsman office or altering an appeal process, uh, that again may not sound uh, exciting uh, right now unless you're in the middle of the process. And what House Bill 1 did was created uh, a much more level playing ground for families as they interact. House Bill 1 talked about uh, changing the workforce. We know that if you think about the child welfare system in Kentucky, we always hear about the role of frontline workers, how that can be made more effective, uh, and it began that process. The final thing that I especially appreciate is its attention to uh, issues around abuse and neglect. Uh, you know, if you think about Rupp Arena filled to capacity, but instead of UK fans, they represent children who have been abused in the last 12 months in Kentucky, uh, you, you still have over 5,000 people, 5,000 kids outside the arena. That's the scope of abuse and neglect. This bill also began to ensure that investigations uh, could be done more professionally, more rapidly. So uh, what House Bill 1 represents, in my mind, is uh, a revolution, and I say that in the best possible phrase because that's what we needed when it came to child welfare, and, and House Bill 1 has provided that. Now, how will it change policy within the courts and child protective services? Well, I think, again, I think it's uh, two or three uh, uh, big factors, uh, and I certainly would, would defer to uh, the legislators, but when I look at this, first of all, there is a philosophical angle that, again, going back to every kid needing a family. So there's a clear focus on family restoration, alternative placement like kinship care rather than out-of-home care. Uh, as you know, the numbers, unfortunately, for out-of-home care in Kentucky uh, are increasing rather than decreasing. And, and this bill, I think, begins to offer very practical ways to put more kids in more families. Secondly, uh, Again, when you're talking about adoption or foster care or kinship or abuse and neglect, those are tough processes. I mean, uh, nobody gets into any of those without some kind of a crisis. And we know there are gonna be hiccups along the way. Uh, again, what this bill offers in a very quiet way uh, is more equitable standing 
for families uh, who may be uh, uh, in conflict or working with the cabinet. Uh, we also think that it, it, there's an efficiency quotient that will speed up foster care uh, placement, certainly looking at the processes around adoption to make those more efficient. And then again, without being redundant, uh, if I'm a frontline worker, I got a tough job. Uh, the cabinet in general deals with turnover, uh, caseloads, those kind of things. I think that, that this bill encourages us to think about those frontline workers uh, in a career in a different kind of way. So uh, I'm old enough to remember uh, the Kentucky Education Reform Act and at the time I was a public school administrator and when CARA came into Kentucky in 1990, it changed every schoolhouse in the state like that. I literally think House Bill 1, uh, when it is fully implemented, is going to change the child welfare system just like that. And that's a good thing for all of us, especially Kentucky's kids. And for people that want more information about uh, what your organization does on behalf of the state of Kentucky, uh, where can they get more information? Sure. Uh, well, you certainly can go you can Google in Kentucky Youth Advocates. Uh, our website is www.kyyouth.org. Uh, and it's going to tell you what we do and maybe even more important, it's going to invite you to be involved in making a difference for kids in the Commonwealth. Well, thanks so much, Dr. Brooks, for joining us here on In Focus Kentucky and talking about the work that your organization is doing here in our state. Mario, we, we appreciate the opportunity to be here. Absolutely, and thanks so, mu so much for watching In Focus Kentucky. There are many ways to keep up with updates about this show. You can watch this or any of our past shows online at SpectrumInFocus.com, and you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just search at Mario Anderson TV. Have a great week.